Is oil painting even safe? And is it really okay to use water with your acrylics without ruining them? Today I've got 13 rounds where we're going to cover some really serious misinformation and compare oils versus acrylic painting. First, I want you to look at these two paintings. One was done in oils, one was done in acrylics. Which do you think is which? Patreon students, you have my permission to cheat since you guys already know the answer. We will come back to why I asked you if you could tell which is which later in this video. Round one, oil paints are messy. Fight. This is sort of like claiming that living rooms are messy. I mean, they can be, but neither need to be. A living room is, by nature, no messier than the person who uses it. And you may be thinking, well, I'm a messy person, so maybe oils aren't for me. There are habits that you just need to develop in order to not be messy with them. If you're getting your oil paint all over the place, you need to slow down and pay attention to what you're doing. Oil paint isn't even prone to splattering like acrylics, given how thick the oils are. There are two main things you need to avoid. First, don't touch your wet painting. Pick up or move the canvas by touching the edges of the straight canvas. I intentionally do not paint the edges of my canvas with oil paint until the very end so that I can easily move it around and grip it by this area. I don't recommend starting your oil painting journey with canvas boards because there's no edges to grab onto and being that you've got to get in the habit and develop good clean painting practices, let's not make things harder than they need to be. So I do recommend stretch canvases to get started with, or you can get canvas paper or canvas pads like Fredericks makes some, and you can tape those to a board. Then you can grip the board without touching the wet painting. This can be a habit that you just need to work on, especially if you're coming from a medium like acrylics where you're able to touch it right away, being that it's dry right away. Get a mull stick. I rest this against the easel and my hand against the stick when I need extra stability. Even a broomstick can work for this. Second, keep your brush handles painted free. If your brush rolls into the paint, stop and wipe that paint off the handle immediately. It's not that it's going to ruin the handle. It's just that you have got to get used to keeping your hands and keeping your workspace clean. This is just a good general habit to be in with oil painting. Even with non-toxic materials, if you are sloppy and lazy about this, you'll end up with paint all over your hands, which in turn ends up on everything you touch. That could be your face, your pets, your painting where you didn't want paint to be. Do you have a cup of coffee in the studio? Well, if you had cadmium paint on your hands and then touch that cup, then drink from that spot. This could be unsafe. We're going to cover that in just a moment. Keep your workspace clean. Trust me, this is a habit you can develop even if you are not by nature a very tidy person. This is the wrong medium to allow mess. You choose if it's messy or not, just like your living room. Okay, to be fair, your kids may choose if your living room is a mess or not, but you get my point. If you have cats, this next step is especially important. Get a Masterson palette. This works like a Tupperware for your palette. It keeps the paint wet longer, plus it keeps your pets out of the wet paint while you're not working. Round two, oil paint is more toxic than acrylic. <laughs> Oil paints themselves are no more toxic than acrylic paints. If you use a real cadmium paint in oil, or if you use a real cadmium paint in acrylic, they're both toxic. Same with cobalt. There are non-toxic alternatives to all of these colors in oils and acrylics. Mind blown? Yeah. There's a lot of fear mongering going on on the internet about oil paints. They are no more toxic themselves than acrylics. It just depends on which pigment is in the paint. Sure, in the past, many of the materials used by artists were horribly, horribly toxic. Now it's 2022, we have much safer alternatives. Even if you choose to use a cobalt or cadmium or even lead white paint, as long as you're keeping your workspace clean, as I mentioned in round one, there are no serious dangers unless you're eating your paint. I shouldn't have to say this, but kids do weird things these days. Don't eat your paint. What are you doing? Making you tea. Is that cobalt paint? Yeah. Teach you to spray me in the face with a spray bottle. The other thing that you would not want to do is inhale these paints in dry form. And now this is where I think there's a lot of confusion. People think that, in, that smelling the paint while it's still wet, that that's dangerous. The real danger comes from the dry powder form. So let's say you had a cadmium color and the dry pigment and you were mixing it with your own oils. It's not 1820. I don't know why you would do that, but whatever. You want to mix your own paint? I probably wouldn't with those colors. The same thing goes for sanding it down. Let's say you painted a canvas and you decided, ugh, I screwed this up. I hate it. I'm going to start over. I'm going to sand this off. That could potentially be very dangerous to breathe in those particles. So that is where those colors become a concern. You don't even have to use those colors though. You can completely use non-toxic alternatives and you, the end result of your painting is nearly identical as their toxic counterparts. The most toxic area when it comes to oil painting is with the solvents. The problem with solvents 
droplets isn't really, if it touches your skin, I've never had a bad reaction to that. Most people do not. Some people can be hypersensitive, but most it's not gonna be an issue. The problem is from breathing in and inhaling those fumes. Now, turpentines and such that have been used in the past, those can be horribly toxic, especially if you're in an enclosed space with poor ventilation. But that's another area we've got safer alternatives. I personally use Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner or Gamsol. Both are odorless, so bonus there. That doesn't mean non-toxic, but they are far less toxic than your traditional turpentines. When I paint, I'm not using my solvents during the painting process. I only use it at the end of the painting to clean my brushes. I use a mixing medium to thin my paints with called liquid. This does have solvent in it, just not as much as a straight solvent. So that is the only thing that is open in the air while I'm painting. That minimizes my exposure to solvents that much more. I have had to restrict my classrooms to just these two types of odorless mineral spirits because everything else, even when listed as odorless, cause headaches and breathing issues for myself and other students. Turpentines are the worst. If you've ever watched how Bob Ross painted where he would take that paintbrush and into an open can of his solvent and just beat it back and forth against the edge there, that is a perfect example of how to not safely work. That was the most dangerous, worst idea you could possibly do with a solvent because you're now getting those little particles in the air that you don't wanna be breathing that in. That was such bad form. And this is what we want. I know I'm gonna get hate comments already from Bob Ross fans. I'm not saying he was a bad guy. I'm saying that's dangerous, don't do it. When you are not using solvent, leave a lid on it. You don't need that open in your workspace. And of course, open a window when you can. It's not as scary as some people make it out to be. Now, I know this sounds all doom and gloom, but I'm personally less concerned with my odorless paint thinner than I am with breathing in bathroom cleaners I use each week. I've never once had a negative reaction to these supplies. Even if these things still make you uncomfortable, there are some non-toxic alternatives you can use. Gamblin has some wonderful information on toxicity on their website. I'll put a link to that in the video description. Round three, acrylics can't blend as well as oils. Yes, they absolutely can, but you need to either paint fast or keep them wet. I like to use a fine mist sprayer to lightly mist the paint on the canvas to keep it from drying. With this method, I could keep the paint wet for hours if I needed to, allowing me to blend just like I can with oils. It's more challenging, but it is absolutely possible as I demonstrate regularly in my acrylic paintings. Round four, oil painting is harder than acrylics. Fight. Once a student understands when it's time to stop and let a layer dry, oils are generally far easier to teach than acrylics. It's more challenging for most students to keep the acrylics wet while blending than it is for oils. So when people ask me, should I start with oils or should I start with acrylics? Start with whatever you're interested in, but don't shy away from oils thinking they're harder. They're really not. Round five, acrylics can't get the same depth as oil. They look dull, flat, or plasticky. <laughs> Our acrylics and oils, when layered the same, look the same. As far as the paint looking flat, once you put a gloss varnish over it, the acrylics look exactly like their oil counterparts, assuming the artist otherwise knew how to layer, blend, glaze, and understood values. I see many claim that it just isn't possible for acrylics to look like oil. They can't achieve the same depth. The reality is just because those artists making those claims have not succeeded in something does not mean it's not possible. Round six, oils cost more than acrylics. <laughs> That really just depends on the materials you buy. For my bare minimum to get someone started with oils or acrylics, the price is about $20 higher with oils at the time of recording this video. I'll have a link to those basic supply lists in the video description, but give it a few months and it can flip in the reverse where the acrylics are a bit higher. The cost is so similar. Those lists are the bare minimum and do not include the higher cost paints or things like an airbrush that I use for acrylics. If I buy everything I wanted for acrylics and everything I wanted for oils, I'm gonna spend more on acrylics because of the airbrush setup. That's an additional 500 right there. Round seven, oil paints smell bad. Fight. Most oil paint has little to no odor at all. What you're normally smelling are the solvents that some artists use, like the, the turpentines I was talking about earlier. Mona Lisa odorless and Gamsol have no odor. The oils themselves have a very mild, pleasant smell. I've been in the room with someone who had previously used turpentine to wash just their brushes. They had, weren't even using the turpentine itself in the class. Months later, those brushes still smelled horrible. That's how strong some of these other solvents can be. So much so that opening the box they stored them in filled the entire room with head inducing stink. So when you have smelled that terrible, terrible smell, what you're smelling is the wrong choice in solvents. Round eight, oil paintings take months to dry and even longer to complete than acrylics. 
They can take that long, or you can use it, what I do and use a fast drying medium. So most of my paint is dry to the touch overnight. As for the time, in this owl painting, the oil side only took two thirds of the actual paint time as the acrylic side. I spend more time getting areas blended right in acrylics than I do for oils. The thing is with acrylics, because it dries so quick, I can go on to my next layer sooner. So there's some variation there, but the actual hours spent painting, I generally spend a bit less on the oils than I need to on acrylics to make them look the same. Round nine, oil paintings are more valuable than acrylics. Fight. My oil paintings and acrylic paintings sell for the exact same price. Normally, if you go to a gallery and you see that difference in price, that comes down to the specific artist and the name that they have built for themselves, the demand they've developed for the work that they created, not the medium. There are a few old timers who have this idea of oils being fancier, but it just isn't the case in most scenarios anymore. When it comes down to the work itself and the actual value of the art, it just depends on the artist. Round 10, you can't can't fix mistakes. Fight. I've heard this both for oils and acrylics. Both are very forgiving to fix things. If the paint, especially with oils, if the paint is still wet, just wipe it off and then repaint it. If it's dry, paint over it. Round 11. Acrylics need a mixing medium. Do not use water. Fight. Okay, this one's a bit spicy. There's a video here on YouTube that spread this lie. I suspect this single video led to the majority of misinformation on the subject around the internet for the last 10 years or so. This woman made claims that anything above 30% water mixed in with your paint will degrade the paint. She tried to use some fancy terms like honeycomb structure and molecules to make it sound like she knew what she was talking about. She knows nothing. This fear-mongering video has been a giant pain in the rear for most artists who do know what they're talking about and do know what they're doing because we are now constantly having to fight this insane myth in our own comments section every time we use water. When people started pointing out that she was wrong in the comments section of her video, her solution was just turn the comments off. Video's still up. Years and years later, that video is still up, spreading the misinformation. The reality is Golden's themselves have proven using actual testing that you would need 90 to 95% water before any degradation of the paint would happen when using a quality paint. No one uses 90 to 95% water. You don't even have to worry about this. You are free to use mixing mediums or water. It's up to you, either are safe for your work. Round 12, oil painting brushes are a lot of work to clean. Fight. My method for cleaning acrylic painting brushes, rinse in water, wash with soap when done. My method for cleaning oil painting brushes, rinse in OMS, wash with soap when done. Time spent, the same. The difference is when you're rinsing your acrylic brushes, you're generally doing that as you work. And when I'm painting with oils, I wait to the very end of my painting session and wash them all together. So it seems like it takes a lot more work. Actual time spent is probably the same. Round 13, oil paintings can't be varnished for six months after they dry. Fight. That is true with most varnishes, but you can use Gamvar by Gamblin. This is a wonderful varnish. It's what I use myself, and you can varnish it when the thickest portion of your painting is dry to the touch. As you can see, these two paintings look nearly identical. There isn't much difference in the end result. So you just need to decide which methods of working interest you more. Remember, when you think of oil paintings looking a certain way or acrylics looking another way, that came down to the specific artist and their techniques and skill level. The medium itself is not the limit on what either of these can do. The artists themselves are the limit. So that covers some of the myths. In practice, what are the real differences that I see when working with oils over acrylics? With oils, I don't have to rush. The dry time's just easy. I'm not having to fuss with a fine mist sprayer. With acrylics, I can go on to my next layer right away. I don't have to let it dry overnight. Sometimes one is a bonus, sometimes the other is a bonus. It's not a matter of which one is better, it's what do you prefer. The differences when I work, usually when I work with acrylics, I paint the entire background, like the subject's not even there. If you go back and watch any of my acrylic videos, I will paint the whole background and then draw in the subject and paint on top of that. Whereas with oils, I will usually draw out the subject and then paint around it. Because the oils dry so slow, it's not a problem to paint around your subject. You've got plenty of time to blend. With acrylics, that can be a bit annoying. It can be done, I actually did that on this painting, so they were very similar, but the background wasn't complicated. So that is one big difference for me. Usually it's just the layering process of my background versus my subject. The other difference is that with oils, I am thinning my paint down as I paint with liquid. With acrylics, I'm thinning my paint down with water. I use both mediums. I love them both. I would like to know for you personally who won this battle, oils or acrylics. Let me know in the comments. You win. Perfect. <laughs>
Did you like these owl paintings? Become a student over at patreon.com slash lawcree and you can follow along step by step. All of my newer lessons now have downloadable photos that you can use to guide you as you work. If you're not familiar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to over seven years worth of art lessons and demonstration. That's over 300 videos instantly when you sign up. You are not going to find a deal like that anywhere else. Head over to patreon.com slash to join or check out my video library over on my website to see what I have available. Did you enjoy this video? And I think you will like this one full of more art tips.